Wukong is a terrible champion. Yumi is a terrible champion. Respectively, both of them have terrible win rates in their originated roles. Though Wukong is designed as a top laner because of his poor sustain and bad dueling potential, he has basically been railroaded into an assassin for the mid lane. Yumi, on the other hand, has been very dominant in 2019, but nerf after nerf after nerf after nerf has pretty much gutted this champion to the ground. In fact, in recent weeks, Yumi's win rate has dipped below 40%. Both of these champions aren't doing so well in their intended roles. But sometimes, if you take two bad things and put them into one thing, it becomes a really good thing. And that is Wukong Yumi Bot. In a recent patch, Yumi's W was buffed substantially to give more adaptive force to the person that she anchors. It goes all the way up to 20% adaptive force, which ranges anywhere from 10 all the way up to 150 bonus AD for the Wukong. 150 bonus AD! That's essentially like having three and a half extra BF swords. Now, I know what you might be thinking. This is just another one of those cheesy double bruiser bot lanes where you get really far ahead in the early game, but if you lose the early game, you get completely destroyed. That's actually not the case at all. Though Wukong has a very poor early laning phase, he actually scales fairly decently throughout the mid and late game. The invisibility, the dash, and the burst that he has in his kit makes him a very viable champion in the late game. This is only the case if you build full damage though. The only Wukong players that have been able to get past Master Tier have been Wukong players that play him mid lane and build him full assassin with the lethality items like Duskblade and Yumu's. These items take advantage of Wukong's high burst potential and quick combo. But Yumi takes this combo to another level. Let's take a look at the people who actually created this combo. Saggy Nips and Reggie Bot. Well, originally no. when we first started League, we didn't play bot lane together. I'm, I'm in jungle actually and he... What did you used to play? I forgot. Top lane. Yeah, he used to play like top lane or something. It first started off with us playing random stuff in the bot lane. It used to be like Wukong Fiddle. Then it transitioned to like Wukong Lux, Wukong Kha'Zix, you know. Just like random stuff, you know. Play like Rengar, Kha'Zix, but then we tried a lot of different things out in it. And this this Wukong Yumi seemed to be uh, the one that gave us some ELO gains. So yeah, I'm thinking it's maybe Masters level worthy, but you know, we'll, we'll you see. You sure, man? You've been inting. <laughs> I mean, some, some days I run it down, but you know, it's okay. Here's what you need to understand about this combo. The early game is really bad. Wukong is bad to mediocre early game. Yumi isn't even a champion in the early game. One thing you have to accept when you play this cheese is that you're going to have to give up a lot of CS in the early game. In every single game that did not have jungle intervention, this duo was pushed to their tower on the second wave every single time. You have to accept that your early game sucks, you have to accept that you're not playing for farm, you're playing for kills. He's got no range in a bot lane, so when you're getting double range, you just get harassed like no tomorrow. What it is, ultimately, you gotta give up a, quite a bit of CS in the early stages of the game until you hit like level three. It's all about discipline, really, you know, like when to give up CS and when not to give up CS, because they be bullying you like the whole lane phase in it, but some CS is just a death sentence in it going for. You need to know right. how much HP you're gonna lose for that CS and whether it's worth it. Some CS can lead you to an all in and ultimately to your death, you know, and you, you gotta know when, the, when, the, when to give up those kind of CS. You, you want to get XP still. As long as you're getting the XP, it's, it's good enough. You can, when you reach level six, the worst case scenario, you're down like maybe 40 CS. Uh, it's, it's not the end of the world. Like one or two kills can make up for it. Now you can start trading, you know, you E in, auto Q, proc your Thunderlords and then clone out. And then once you get them low enough, you can start making all in plays. Level six, yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll get a couple of kills there. Now, now, you're, now you're relevant in the game after level six. Wukong's ultimate does an insane amount of damage. The problem is that most of the time you don't get all the damage off. A lot of the time, Wukong will just have difficulty reaching people with his ultimate. The reason that Wukong Yumi works so well is because the combination of CC works so well together. As they're knocked up from Wukong's ultimate, Yumi is getting stacks of her ultimate. So as soon as one crowd control ends, another one begins. And this usually means that they will take the full amount of damage from Wukong's ultimate. This pretty much guarantees at least one kill on the enemy team, often leading to two. Assassin Wukong has a lot of weaknesses. Lack of bulk, lack of speed. 
basically Yumi makes up for Wukong's weaknesses. Wukong in general has like sustain issues or like mobility issues once he goes into a team fight and Yumi kind of makes up for it. Mutually benefit each other because of Yumi's W and vice versa and Yumi will get a lot of AP off Wukong because all his stacks is AD right. Unlike traditional ADCs to go like attack speed builds, you don't really get that huge AD from the knockout from Wukong's ult times perfectly with the Yumi stun with the ult, you know. So as soon as they like come in out of the knockout, they're instantly like rooted as well from the Yumi. Yeah, I like a lot a lot of their games I'd I'd feed early, but then out of nowhere I'm like, you know, I end up getting like twenty and five going twenty and five or something like that, you know. It's, it it scales very hard too. Now, with any Chi strat, there are going to be certain champions that just completely counter your strategy. The two main champions that you should look out for in lane are Caitlyn and Senna. But one of the worst champions to go up against is not even one that exists in the bot lane. Mordekaiser is, 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 is one of the, is one, is probably going to be bands one of the top four bands, actually. Mordekaiser, as soon as he presses the ult on you, you go in for a team fight, he presses the ult on you, the... The whole the whole play is ruined. Yumi gets kicked out of that. And... Yumi gets kicked out of the when you get ulted, um, you're very vulnerable, then you die one v one to the Mordekaiser at that point. Um, Unless you have QSS in it. And that's the only counter item. You you buy QSS in that in that case, but you know, you don't really want to be buying QSS as long. You wanna ruins your damage quite quite a lot. You know, you don't wanna really be doing that just for a Mordekaiser. The most common reason that bruiser bot laners get outscaled in the late game is because they can no longer kill the AD carry. Once the AD carry gets some items and some peel, it's difficult for bruisers to even be able to reach the AD carry. Wukong Yumi is able to consistently destroy the AD carry no matter what stage of the game it is. This is one of those combos that effectively forces the AD carry to buy items like Guardian Angels. One of the biggest boosts that Yumi gives to Wukong is the speed. The invisibility of Wukong's W only lasts for one and a half seconds. Wukong needs full damage to be an effective burst assassin, so he can't buy items like Righteous Glory. But Yumi has a speed up in her E, and she can buy items like Shirelia's. This allows Wukong to cover a lot more distance while he's invisible, and make bigger and better picks on the AD carries. You need to make smart plays where, like, you know, you need to either kill two to go even or you kill one escape you can't ever kill one person and then die because that's that's not worth it as you Wukong, Wukong yumi because if you kill one person and die you're giving away two deaths or for one kill that's not worth it. champions that can stall out enough time you don't want to pick them off but it's, it's part of limit testing as well some zillions won't even get that all off in time some trend won't even get that all off in time you want to kind of test feel them out if they're a good zillion player a good you know Kindred player, tournament player, like you, you, you feel them out. You have so much hard CC and burst that champions like Zillion and Trindomir can't even react with their ultimates. In a way, this is actually the inverse of a double bruiser bot lane. Because usually you're gonna get shit on in lane, you'll probably lose your tower very early on, but as the game goes on, as you get a few more lethality items, once Yumi's W is granting you 50 to 100 AD, that's when you really start popping off. It has like this this effect on the enemy ADC that they're dominating the lane, that they are they can play a little cocky, make plays that maybe they shouldn't, whereas like later on now, like we abuse that, you know? So they're like, we're getting abused and now we're, we're the one abusing, you know? <laughs> so if that makes sense, like act a certain way at the early game so that we, we seem as like not a threat, you know? We might even end up 0-3 in lane, 0-4, like wh whatever it is. And it has this effect on the enemy team that we're useless, we're irrelevant, we're like not a threat at all. And then later on, they kind of see like, wait a minute, like this guy's like, you know, they're, they're, they're starting to be a threat now. They're, they're becoming a problem. Essentially, this is like being the main protagonist of any major story. Your early childhood is filled with people bullying you and harassing you. Eventually, you won't be able to handle it anymore, so you're going to be pushed out of lane. But once you get a little experience, once you start growing, once you get a few levels, once a little bit of time has passed, you're going to be able to get some real items, and your friend will actually be able to start supporting you more. And by the very end, the bully who had given you so much hurt and harassment early on, eventually, he will become a joke to you. For your build, start Corrupting Pot for the early lane and sustain. Rush Tiamat so you can clear waves faster. Then get Serrated Dirk. Once you've completed Serrated Dirk, buy Boots. And upgrade your Boots into Mobility Boots once you finish your Duskblade. Duskblade is the best lethality item in the game. 
It gives you more damage, but more importantly, it gives you the knowledge of whether or not you're stepping over a ward. Mobility boots are the most effective because they allow you to run faster while you're invisible. Then get Yumu's Ghost Blade, Last Whisper, and Edge of Night. The Last Whisper is upgraded into Grievous Wounds or Armor Penetration depending on the enemy team. If they have a lot of healing champions then you definitely want the extra Grievous Wounds. For runes on Wukong, take Electrocute, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, and Relentless Hunter. Since you're a Burst Champion, you obviously want Electrocute and Sudden Impact. Eyeball Collection helps out a lot with Yumi's W. And Relentless Hunter for the obvious speed up. For your secondary, you want Sheer Damage. Absolute Focus and Gathering Storm are the best runes to take in this tree. For rune stats, take Straight Adaptive Force along with Armor for the early lane. Yumi's build is a lot more complex and situational depending on where you are in the game. Start with Spell Thief's Edge as your support item, and get Dark Seal as your first back item. Since you're playing for kills, Dark Seal tends to stack really quickly in this build. It's very cheap and it's very cost effective. It is one of the few must buy items in Yumi's build. For your first actual item, you have a variety of choices. If you're falling behind and have a hard time in the laning phase, you can try to build Arden Sensor for improved heals. If you're both extremely behind, you can try to get Redemption to help your team survive throughout the mid game. If you get really far ahead, you can go ahead and rush Shirelia's for the extra speed up and better assassination attempts. If the enemy support has really strong CC and you need to cleanse, you can rush Mikhail's Crucible. And if you're feeling very confident in the late game, you can also upgrade your Dark Seal into an actual Medjice. For your last item, you can get Athene's Unholy Grail for improved heals and mana regeneration. Yumi's end build doesn't change, but the order of her build changes very often. And a good Yumi player needs to be able to recognize which one is the best first item choice to get Wukong into the mid late game so he can make those assassinations. For runes, take Summon Airy, Mana Flow Band, Absolute Focus, and Gathering Storm. Summon Airy gives better shields and heals to Wukong when she wants to untach and reattach. Mana Flow Band so she can heal Wukong more in lane. Absolute Focus and Gathering Storm synergize very well with Yumi's W. And for the secondary page, take Presence of Mind and Cut Down. While Cut Down is not the most ideal one for Yumi, Presence of Mind is simply too good on her to ignore. And taking anything else in the street for Yumi in the long term doesn't really do much. For Rune Stats, take CDR, Adapted Force, and Armor. I mean, I think it definitely will work really well in low elo and i wouldn't say we're in high elo we're in like d2 but um, too much low elo again. like it's it's it, if you still look at our games in d2 where we're doing really well maybe like a challenger wukong player and a challenger yumi main or whatever came together and did this strat i think they'd uh they'd uh do really well we're obviously like you know not like you know challenger level but like you know we've had like a lot of games that people think we're smurfing and we're like pro players messing around on our smurf accounts or something and we have a lot of games when people think we're trolling and stuff and just for yeah. 15 minutes yeah you, yeah you, that's one of the downsides too our teammates would think that we're trolling uh they pick troll picks or they play like an adc top laner or something like that that's a common you know one. Or, or eventually like we'd feed like maybe three kills in lane and our teammates would already give up and go afk by now and that's that's like the majority of the games that we lose more like a a mental thing on your teammates end as well you gotta keep the mental of your teammates so <laughs> as well to, to, to win i consistently do well I, I i tell them like you know look me up i do this all the time i made it to your elo that you're playing in with your traditional jungle top lane wherever you know i made it to your elo so give me a chance you know riot has announced that there will be in fact a rework for wukong and while this cheese might still work with the new wukong it still works right now with the current wukong so it's best to go out there and try it for yourself right now. Thanks for watching. If you want to support the channel, please like, subscribe, and share the video. If you want more updates of what I'm doing, you can check out my Discord or my Twitter. Both links will be in the description below. Big thank you to Saggy and Reggie for doing the interview. And that's it. Bye!